So, John, what do you think your undoing would be in a factory? In a Willy Wonka factory or just any kind of factory? Yeah, sure. What? what, what? <laughs> Willy Wonka factory. Then. Sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I would be the kid who asked incessantly to find out where HR was and got, <laughs> got very swiftly shuffled out based on this movie. Like, where's health and safety? What's going on here? Like, who's so in charge of this? You just get escorted out of the building. That's, I would, I, yeah, that, I would immediately that, that, that's get. That's your undoing. You don't fall into a chocolate lake and get sucked up by a pipe. I think I'd probably be shoved into the chocolate lake because, and then Willy <laughs> would deny all knowledge of me. That's probably what would happen. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah. Not this worst ways to go. Yeah. <laughs> As we saw in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so- Welcome everybody to Beyond the Box Set, the podcast where today we are pitching prequels, sequels and spin-offs to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. We're going to be pitching some drinking games and hearing from my listeners with the submissions that they've come up with and posted on our social media pages. First, we're going to talk through some of our favourite moments and give a bit of a plot summary as well. I'm Harry, the host with the most, Sweet Tooth. Mm. Today I'm joined by Pete Allison, the guest with the best, taste in films. Thank you very much. I would say. After this choice. And joining me as always, it's the bad egg of the podcast, it's John Lucas. <laughs> always a pleasure, Harry. Always a pleasure. Um, okay, so Pete, you've uh, you've got another podcast. Do you want to just tell us a little yes. bit about that and tell us who you are and stuff? Uh, and my who name, the hell are you? I was just saying, my what? name is Pete Allison. You've already done that <laughs> bit for me, haven't you? Yeah, why, why are you even here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, our, our podcast, um, I do a podcast with my friend Dave Cribb, who is a comedy producer and comedy writer. Uh, we have a podcast called Friends with Friends, where we invite people to, well, I'd say select their favourite episode of Friends, but we're now at the point where lots of favourite episodes have already gone so mm. we're starting to sort of work our way through the dregs <laughs> the lesser <laughs> episodes <laughs> have you done but, Joey Learns French yet <laughs> yes <laughs> which is just like there, there is have, have you done Ross Hires a Manny no oh, we haven't done wor- that one that's the worst I'll, I'll come on if you want that's that the worst episode that one aged terribly that's so bad yeah it really has so bad but the Joey the, the reason that the, the Joey episode where he tries to speak French has come up and with that that also gets referenced a lot because of the sort of slow digression of Joey as a human being from yes. the start of Friends to end of Friends because he is he is not thick at the start no. of Friends and then it progresses to his absolute low moment of <laughs> literally being incapable of repeating words said to him <laughs> seconds before when, he, when, she's, when Phoebe's trying to teach her French. So, um, yeah, we basically, as I'm sure you do with your films, we dissect episodes of Friends to painstaking sort of levels. Okay. Um, and that's what we do on Friends with Friends. Okay, so to get on topic, yes. yeah. um, you've brought us today a horror film. <laughs> yeah, a terrifying horror film. It is yeah. very dark. Mm. I mean, there is literally a chicken being decapitated in this film. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which I only realised on my last rewatch of this like oh my god you actually that's actually real footage of a chicken actually being decapitated yeah yeah. And this, this oh. is a film for children yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not it's also not just dark in well the fate of the chicken as you've described mm. and the fate of the children as mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll describe as well but um, also just some of the, the the way that some of it's filmed like when they're on the boat and they're it's very trippy and very mm, intense mm. and very weird and very creepy and I can picture the the like Gene Wilder's eyes and things at that point mm-hmm. where he's very like essentially talking them th- it, 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 it's made to look like a trip isn't it it is oh, well, it's it's one of those scenes the boat scene is, is always showing up in those lists of the top 10 most traumatic scenes in children's yeah. films like the scar you it's like it's up there with the horse in the never ending story you know it's that yeah. level of like horrifying like, yeah. yeah I think only when I've been thinking about it because I was talking about it today <laughs> I, I think have I realised quite how many of the really creepy things I actually remember about it as mm. well and that the the boat and the sort of quite close up shots of him yeah that's really weird do you think that's the most iconic scene of the film 
And do you know the, the the scene that I? It's a very iconic film, to be honest. Yeah, isn't it? it is, and there's the, and and also the. I mean, the story is just. Have we said about this film being dark? That is true to wrong. Have we actually said the title yet? We no, it's Willy Wonka. Yeah? It's, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate. Factory. Yeah, we're doing Willy Wonka and the Chocolate. <laughs> I mean, it's the title of the episode. Yeah, you know, but people sure. are going to get eight minutes in without sure. realizing what it sure, is. Sure, but still, okay. <laughs> just so we're clear, it's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate. But factory. it is it, it is reflective of Roald Dahl's Roald Dahl's mm. books for yeah. it to be dark because I mean. There uh, is some amazingly dark stuff in oh, Roald yeah. Dahl's mm-hmm. books, which are obviously for kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of fitting that this should be really weird. Do you know what? I also... I, I think the, the whole song around the goose's egg... Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I think that is probably... I don't know why, but that's the scene that I remember best yeah. from it. Because mm. it's sort of peak brat in the yeah. film. <laughs> and you are made to dislike these children because yeah. they are all horrible brats yes. and that is I think she is the most sort of insufferable character in it I think mm. yeah. so yeah I, I think probably that but the one that I am scarred by perhaps mm-hmm. uh, is probably the, the boat ride yeah it is very it is very odd yeah. very weird yeah that makes sense I was always scared by the uh, uh, the lifting bubbles mm. scene oh yeah when they're just getting higher and higher and it's just so much fun it's yeah. great and then suddenly like oh my god what? how do we yes We've not thought this through. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, I mean, they become, uh, it's, they are alarmingly close to, well, being ripped to bits by yeah. a fan, essentially, yeah. a mechanical yeah, fan. Yeah, it does become a full horror movie at that moment, for yeah, that, yeah. you know, truly. Which is weird. And, and, and also at that point, I'm thinking like, oh my God, they've like broken the rules and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like something bad has happened to literally everybody else and bad's about to happen oh there it is yeah <laughs> yeah but it's also, it's, it is, it is a children's film and mm. yet there are some proper horror yeah. moments in it. I mean, I would argue that that's true of most of the best children's films. Like, you yeah. think of, like, World Ship Down, but, horrifying. But yeah, a, lot, a lot of them, they, they have some kind of a, a message behind the horror. Like, with the, the bubbles scene, sure. that one's great. Like, if somebody says, don't drink something, don't go and drink it, because... Sure. You don't know how bad it could be. Sure, that makes sense. <laughs> just, just, just a, just a, a, a euphemism for being spiked, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, look, that makes sense to put in a film. I can understand the message. The the tunnel. Yeah. What's no, the that's that's there? just to scare people. Yeah. Is it don't yeah. get on boats with strange men? I mean, that is quite good advice. That is good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly now I thought about yeah. it, but yeah. Yeah. no, I, I, I think uh, yeah, there's sort of a warning that comes with each of. The children, isn't it? Well, most of it is to do with greed, isn't it? Mm. Yes. And whether it's one thing, well, in Augustus's case, mm-hmm. the chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the chewing gum in Violet's case. Mm-hmm. Also, why does a child want a go- Why does a child want a golden egg? It's because she wants things. She, she just, just wants, wants everything. everything. She, wants everything. Yeah. She, she wants everything because she's told she can't have it. So yes, she wants it. I guess. And she's, mm-hmm. as That's a child, what? used to. Or as a, a, the, the child of rich family, obviously. Yeah. 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 She is used to having everything. I mean, I could take this beer away from you right now. And say like, well, alcohol's bad for you. But you'd still want it even more then. That's true. Yes, I'd feel uh, I'd feel even more keen to have it, wouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. But I, yeah so the, the, so that's the thing. There's sort of like quite a profound warning with each of them, and then as you say, you get to Charlie, and it's don't drink stuff when you're told not to. It's, mm-hmm. it's sort of it's, that's slightly less well, but like say a useful advice when it comes to spiking. Definitely, that's, yeah. That's yeah. What yeah. About it. Well, Rodol wrote the, a version of the screenplay. Yeah, he got binned off, didn't he? Yeah, he got binned off and was he disowned the film. He hated the finished product because they added stuff that he just wasn't happy with. Yeah. Including that scene because he felt like it took away the whole, the whole point of the novel, if you read it, is that Charlie is the only one who doesn't misbehave, yeah. who behaves properly and doesn't like disrespect Willy Wonka's rules. Hence, he wins at the end. Mm-hmm. And so they added the scene with the bubbles to give a bit of excitement to his character because otherwise his character is basically entirely passive in the movie. Charlie's pretty boring. He is pretty boring, yeah. <laughs> He's not a great hero. And nor is Grandpa Joe, which we, um, we, we can discuss at length what a dickhead he is. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was something that Roald Dahl was quite annoyed by. And also the ending was a lot more sugary, no yeah. pun intended, than what Roald Dahl would have, intent, would have wanted. Because mm. his novels are, even by the standards of this film, quite bleak for children's films. Yeah. Like, if you've read, ever read like even stuff like Matilda and The Twits. And, like, the, I mean, The Twits is dark as fuck. Incredibly oh, yeah. dark. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> George's Marvelous Medicine, that was my favourite, I think. I used, so. love, I, used to have an, uh, I used to have that on a... The story on a cassette. Thing. I did too. I have a real strong ch- sorry, sorry to cut you off, but I had a really <laughs> strong childhood memory of like being sat in my parents' room listening to the cassettes on headphones and the bit where the grandmother is it? Yeah. First drinks yeah, yeah. the potion. For some reason 
I was literally like doubled over crying with laughter at the <laughs> perform of the yeah. the readout of it. I don't know what it is, but it's a real like childhood memory of mine. It was so. probably someone well known that read the version. Probably was like I, Stephen I Fry remember. or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, yeah I um, I, th- I think you said Charlie is incredibly Bland. dull for, yeah. for the vast majority of it. But I was reading as well about there was even once Roald Dahl had been bid off, mm. there was debate over the final line of the film mm. and they added in where he says something about how it's very sort of yeah what happened to the boy who got everything yeah he lived exactly. happily ever after yeah. that's exactly to, it yeah, yeah. and yes. they they added that in because they felt like the ending was too weak for them just to be flying off in the yeah wonderfully named wonka i mean it does end incredibly abruptly yeah that's one thing i noticed watching it about like it's the i think everyone remembers the 20 minutes that make up them being in willy wonka's chocolate factory of this film <laughs> Rather than the forty-five minutes of setup, yeah. and the very quick ending, like right? yeah. I, I think, like even with the, am I allowed to reference the Tim Burton film? Even? Sure, yeah, yeah, it exists. We acknowledge <laughs> it. Yeah. I think that one, that one feels like it gets to them being in the factory much. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is much more build up with this one, which I guess but, kind but of that that one did also have just a lot of fluff around it, like mm. oh here's backstory and yeah and like here's his Wonka's childhood and here's how the where, where he got the Oompa Loompas from and because the know, here's Johnny is... Depp eating a caterpillar and stuff like that and it's not all, <laughs> it's, like it's not all entertaining. A lot of that is just very boring. And the other difference as well is around Charlie's family because in this film. Charlie's dad doesn't work in the factory. Oh yes, I forgot where that he, was a thing. He yeah. does in the book and mm. he does in the Tim Burton one. Mm. But Charlie's first experience of the factory is winning this ticket to go yeah. there, which kind of makes it more special because you think, well, I'm just going to dad's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like, that's that's a bit more <laughs> underwhelming, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. But yeah, there are quite a few differences, not only with the book but also with what Tim Burton did after it. Mm, definitely. And now details on the sudden announcement that has captured the attention of the entire world. Hidden among the countless billions of Wonka bars are five gold tickets. And to the five people who find them will come the most fabulous prize one could wish for. A lifetime supply of chocolate. And as if this were not enough, each winner before he receives his prize will be personally escorted... They're all crazy. The man's a genius. He'll sell a million bars. The of Grandpa, do you think I've got a chance to find one? One? I'm counting on you to find all five. What did you guys think of the pre Willy Wonka factory part? The first, like, and it is literally, I timed it, it was 45 minutes when they actually entered the doors of the factory. So that's a lot of setup. Yeah. I was surprised how much of that I enjoyed, having, like, forgotten a lot of it. Well, I was like, thinking it's not quite all set up. Like, there's a bit of counter setup, maybe for the first. 10 or maybe 15 minutes mm. at, at the very start and then it's like okay here's the golden ticket thing yeah that's, like, that takes up way more of the movie than I remembered yeah. but like although there's not really many iconic scenes in that golden ticket thing everyone knows that concept at least yes of the, of the golden ticket mm. and that's I think largely from this yeah oh, sure. well, well that's done very well it does introduce the characters very well I don't know, some of those early scenes were, like, so much wackier than I remembered them being. Like, yeah. the first ten minutes of this movie is basically just a, a parade of possible sex offenders. Like, pro- <laughs> probable, I would say probable sex offenders. Like, yeah. you get Mr. The Candy Man can. Yeah. Was, I don't trust him for a second. Like, yeah. No, where's he getting his money from? He's giving away free He's not charging children. those children. He's just like, come behind the counter, children, little boys, little girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the good song, no, right? Yeah, um, a good song, sure. Yeah, I forgot his name. Slug, Slug Slughorn. Yes, yeah. is he called Slughorn? He's. In, I can remember being quite frightened by him. Yeah, very sort of uh, mm. demon headmaster vibes. Mm. I thought his glasses made him really scary. Yeah, I think as well. The other thing I was reading about is how much anticipation at the time there must have been for this film mm. because obviously it's the first film adaptation of it. Sure, yeah. But um, there are so many references to actors asking Roald Dahl if they can play. Yeah, uh, Spike Milligan wanted to play it, didn't he? Uh, who else was there? Uh, Peter... Um, Ustinov, was it? No? No. Uh, is it Salas? Peter, Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he wanted to play it. Uh, yeah. They it must was, have sort of been pitching themselves to, it was like to the role, yeah. the role. <laughs> but uh, eventually, obviously, Gene got it. Yes. And I, I, I love his Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka. How, do you, how, do you, how do you compare his Willy Wonka to Johnny Depp? So? All right. <laughs> And that was the the Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp version, was probably at the peak of Johnny Depp's popularity, wasn't it? Because yeah. he'd sort of done part, done a bit of parts of the Caribbean. Yeah, I'd say the peak. I'd say the end. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's not done much since. <laughs> like it's it, it's not the film that made him the most popular. That's yeah. definitely Pirates. But I'd say this was like, yeah, we're all done with Johnny Depp now. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I I do like him mm-hmm. in it. I do remember quite enjoying that film. So I think the music in that film's great. Yeah, the music in the and not obviously quite the classic no. that it. Uh, the classic the Umpa Lumpa songs just aren't as memorable for me. Like, no. Like. I mean, we'll come on to the Umpa We'll get to those, yeah. Um, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I um, I did... I, I do like Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka because there's just this sort of... You, you see a bit more of his backstory in hmm. that film than you do in... I appreciate that it's a different take. He's basically taking the what if Willy Wonka was Michael Jackson, yes. <laughs> no. yes, rather than right. he's, not, he's not impersonating Gene Wilder. So yeah. he's definitely taking his own direction on it. So and you get a bit more idea of sort of his well, he's a sort of he's a child but was deprived of sweets and everything. Yes, he? exactly. Yeah. You see all of that, but I do think that Gene Wilder version is he is so much more sort of enigmatic at the start mm. of it, and, and his reveal and everything is so yeah. much more memorable than. Mm. In fact, off the top of my head, I can't remember the. Johnny Depp Willy Wonka reveal no moment. but Gene Wilder has the moment which apparently he pitched it was his idea where he comes out with the K and it's like oh he's so old and then he does the back yeah and then I think he said he did that because he wanted to establish from the very first scene that you never knew whether Willy Wonka was lying or not yeah so, yeah. yeah and, and he he, fully, he learned the stunt himself yeah he did yeah, yeah so. which mm. is impressive good yeah. commitment indeed but yeah he's I, I find Gene Wilder to be a, a much more sinister kind of Willy Wonka like yeah it's the Utter disregard for the children's health and safety at all points. I mean, at all there times. are so many moments of yeah. child neglect. Oh, sure, like, absolutely. I mean, there's your drinker game. There's that's your, definitely right. Drinker game. There's a moment there. of yeah. child yeah. neglect. Um, it's uh, he feels much more unhinged, and when when he gets angry yeah. with Charlie at the end of the film, he's like genuinely scared. He is. Whereas I don't feel like the Johnny Depp version at any point actually feels. Frightening. No, he feels quite sort of affectionate in lots mm. of ways. But I think uh, the Jim Wilder version, he, there's there's kind of like a wildness there, isn't it? It's including the boat scene. That's sort of the yeah, yeah. Right. Is that, that, like I say, that scene is essentially like a horror movie at that yeah. point. Like if he'd pulled out a knife and started stabbing the children, it wouldn't have been <laughs> yeah. a huge wouldn't have been out of character like, at that like, point. Yeah. So there's definitely an unpredictability there. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. How would you rank the five children? Like in terms of Ooh. how much you enjoyed them. How much I enjoyed them in this film, or how entertaining they were. I mean, enjoyed yeah, yeah, yeah. as a. I know yeah. what you mean. Charlie is the least entertaining. Yeah, he's very, very bland. Yeah, I am probably the most irritated by Veruca. However, I enjoyed her the most. I think she's yeah, my favorite. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, she's kind of like. Also, that character name is so good. He, he yeah. is, it's sort of like <laughs> it's quite sort of his character names are quite sort of Dickensian in the way mm. that you completely get a sense of what their character is like by what absolutely it's, it's and I think brilliant. she knocks it out the park that girl who plays that like she, she amazing, embodies yeah. that so much like I agree with you her song is a real highlight for me like yeah. it's so good it's such a brassy tour de force mm-hmm. like. I'd, I'd probably put her top despite her being the most irritating mm. yeah. I mean Augustus has been and gone pretty quick he doesn't really yeah. stick around for very long no. much either when he's he around. doesn't say a lot no he's yeah he has a very short run isn't, isn't that a factory full of 10 minutes like, yeah so <laughs> yeah. I'd probably I'd put, I think I'd put Charlie but I'm working my way up yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd put Charlie at the bottom I'd put Augustus next mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I put Mike TV next. Yeah, I think I'm Violet. Like he's not quite as my favorites. He's not quite as entertaining as as Violet. No. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, yep, yeah, and yet he he lasts the, the longest. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, leave Veruca and and Violet in there. Yeah, it longer. feels really arbitrary which ones go in which order because absolutely Veruca and Violet are the ones that you you remember. Whereas Mike TV doesn't. He just survives by not doing anything. Yeah, like, yeah. His best being scene quite is be- yeah. His best scene is before he even goes in when his he's talking about guns with his dad it's like this kid's a future serial killer like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I'd go my order from bottom to top will mm. be Charlie Augustus Mike Violet Veruca yeah I think I'd agree with that yeah, yeah. same that, that is I guess the definitive conclusive, ranking, yeah. that's conclusive yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good news Veruca you, you won this round <laughs> good egg yes <laughs> <laughs> Now, when we throw Grandpa Joe into this little, uh, oh, Grandpa Joe! What a what a lazy <laughs> son of a bitch! There is, uh, I think, in the Tim Burton version, the difference between him being 
lazy and in bed. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure, like, all of his grandparents are very elderly. Sure. So I'm sure have perfectly legitimate reasons for being... Well, the bed. other three actors look like they're in their early hundreds, like they could be, you know, like, yeah. genuinely bedridden. But I think because the actor is probably, isn't that old in the grand yeah. scheme of things. Like, he looks a lot more sprightly. Like, he was... He was like, you're his... faking, you're a phony. Like, so in the book, Grandpa Joe is 96. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the film, I think the actor was sort of 60s. Yeah. So much more able than a 96-year-old. Sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he, well, he's not necessarily playing a 96-year-old. No, The character not. in that <laughs> film is not 96. No. But, um, yeah, he's just, he's just lazy, isn't he? I did have a theory watching it this time. I was like, is the mother the, 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 the stealth villain of this movie? <laughs> Because I really got that strange vibe that she might just be abusing the entire family. <laughs> right. But in, in what sense? To what end? Like I don't know what her purpose was. What her purpose was. But there's a bit where they kind of say, "Oh, the the, the four grandparents have been bedridden for twenty years," mm-hmm. which I was like, "Oh my god!" Just I, I would be like, "Kill me! Take me to Dignitas. That's <laughs> what an awful, terrible life." Twenty but, years. But then bed. then it says there's like another throwaway line where it's like, "Well, all we have is cabbage water." So I was like, well, no wonder they can't get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> their this, diet is they are, li- they are literally Tw- 20 like... 20 years, and it's like their mid-30s. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're probably like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's the 20 years of just eating cabbage water. Not even cabbage, cabbage water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No wonder they don't have the strength to get out of bed. So what is that? Like, she goes down to the market, saves mm-hmm. up all her pennies that she picks out of drains, mm-hmm. buys a cabbage, yeah. Yeah. puts it in a bucket... Eats and that feed, in front of them, yeah, and feeds, feeds them the water. Feeds them the water, yeah. <laughs> and then the other Making little red flag about that character was when uh, Grandpa Joe says uh, he tries to give his tobacco money to Charlie to buy a chocolate, and then the mum's like, "No, no, no, that's for you. It's a, you, you only take one tobacco." It's like she's enabling his tobacco. You think if anyone's like, you know, I'm going to quit smoking, you'd be like, "Good for you, you yeah. try that." But she's like such an enabler. She's like, and also, no, don't treat your grandson. Yeah, keep it for yourself. Keep it for yourself, <laughs> and you just chew that tobacco. You keep stay bedroom. I will collect all of the you know, the welfare checks. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe she's the true. I think she's good living a double life. Yeah, cashing those welfare checks and mm-hmm. yeah. out on the town every night. That's my. I also I couldn't until looking back at it for the sake of. of speaking to you about it, I couldn't really remember Charlie's dad no he's just dead isn't he yeah, they just, just like, very old they, they, he's dead they, yeah. they, I, I couldn't remember many like reference to him or anything yeah they, they, it's, again it's a real throwaway line they're just like oh yeah he's, he's dead yeah. But, yeah and yet because she killed him the da- <laughs> she shoved him down the stairs put some poison in his cabbage water poisoned his cabbage water yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yet in the most recent one and in the book he's he well he's in it it's nowhere, he's got a much bigger part yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's in it quite a bit mm, yeah I think I do think it works a lot better. I mean, it's a very classic kind of kids' movies where at least one dead parent. Like, yeah. you know, it's always the case, but heighten the tragedy. It does, yeah. I think it, it, it narrows the, the focus of it. It makes more sense that why Grandpa Joe is the one rather than like well, his mum's obviously a murderer, so he's not going to bring her to the chocolate factory. <laughs> and then the other grandparents are all bedridden, so yeah. Grandpa Joe is the the fo- it makes him more the focal point. I think Grandpa Joe must be so bored mm. to be stuck at home with three well he he is obviously able because he then yeah. ends up in the factory how, mm-hmm. like, how do you think Grandpa Joe feels his days I don't know but again I did think it was very telling of his character when Charlie does win the golden ticket and Grandpa Joe's song is I've got a golden ticket yeah. there's uh, not one point is not there your we moment. in there <laughs> or you it's all I've got the golden ticket this is my moment like he is riding Charlie's coattails so hard it's <laughs> is Grandpa Joe Charlie's mum's dad it's never clear is it what I don't think they ever say because therefore mm. evil would run in that is true yeah it's <laughs> line, wouldn't it? I think that makes sense yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe maybe that's it they've got a whole racket yeah maybe, maybe she lets him out at night to do some laps to keep himself going while the other grandparents <laughs> oh are no like, I know. solidly believe that all four of them when she's out working the laundry and Charlie's in school they're well, just doing star jumps yeah. oh yeah well they're, they're out of the house like, yeah. <laughs> They're Go for walks everything. together. Yeah, yeah, mountain biking. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got they've definitely got lives of their own. They just spend their time when they're inside of their family, just sitting in bed. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. conclusive again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, am I am I allowed to reference a potential sequel? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like given Grandpa Joe in the book is 96 and we can kind of assume that he's very elderly therefore in Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory yeah. I, sh- I I feel that in a, f- in a in a sequel Grandpa you'll be delighted with this Grandpa Joe is, is no, only, no longer with us okay I, I can live with that I, I feel yeah. like he's gone in the gap I'm sure yeah yeah okay so we've killed off Grandpa Joe that's a good mm-hmm. start yeah 
Okay. Yeah, I think that I think that's a, a, a good standard to go with. So. Okay. <laughs> There is some logic applied there yeah. as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, before we get to that kind of thing, um, we should probably talk about the killings off of the yes. children. Well, you know, whether or not they do in fact die is up for debate, but uh, the four children who aren't Charlie, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I reckon thinking that in the Tim Burton one, they give them like a survival scene to kind of... Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they, I, they all leave. Yeah, they I, much prefer, I much prefer this where it's, you know, ambiguous. It yeah. adds to the kind of weird darkness of it. Yeah, because like. in the definitely yeah. Burton mm-hmm. one, Mike TV has sort of been ironed out yeah he's like flat sort of isn't he yeah flat stanley yes. yeah. character type and it, it's not good no it, it doesn't it doesn't make me feel good mm-hmm. and, and but how this is i i don't expect you to conclusively know the answer to this question <laughs> how long do you think it would take to drown in chocolate because I, mean, if I felt like augustus is in there for, for, for long enough time, to already be dead yeah yeah to already yeah be at a point of dying yeah when he gets I was going to say rescued, but it's quite ambiguous as to whether he does get <laughs> no. rescued or whether he sort of gets piped to his death. <laughs> yeah, his I seem- mean, he, he seemed pretty much fine when he was in the pipe. Like, he didn't seem like he was struggling for air. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he was, you know, he was screaming fine. and stuff. Yeah, he's fine. Just, yeah, he I mean, got out. Yeah, but, but, like, he wasn't dying sure. at that point. He wasn't at the edge of death. Okay, sure. So, so the pipe saved him. So, yeah, the pipe definitely saved him, yeah. yeah. Like, he would have drowned otherwise, 100%. Yeah. Now... I think I could survive that amount of time underneath, uh, yeah. uh, under chocolate instead uh, of underwater. I, I, I imagine yeah. you've dreamed of that. Yeah. Uh, of course. <laughs> Augustus Gloop, on the other hand, I, I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's got it in him. I, I, don't, I don't think he can hold hold his breath that long. I don't think he's got the physical fitness. Also, he the, can't swim. Oh, no, well, this is the thing. Like, it, yeah, exactly. He, he he evidently can't swim, so therefore could not manage much time drowning in chocolate mm-hmm. before his death. Mm-hmm. But maybe he was just swallowing it all, like you know, like just eating it, just, <laughs> just, just <laughs> saving himself yeah. very slowly yeah. by consuming it. But do you think the, the pipe mm-hmm. that comes to his aid? Do you think they they have purpose built that? I, I mean, I'm aware it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 get into it. Though, do you please. think they've they've purposely think built this say. pipe for the unlikely circumstances in which someone falls in the? Chocolate River. So it'll suck them in and yeah, yeah. Because I, I what couldn't figure out what for, the purpose for of the pipe. Yeah, I didn't know what the otherwise purpose because the pipe didn't have chocolate running in and out of it until he. But also the the well, factory the, the pipe was to suck chocolate out to go and take it to other parts of the factory. Oh, is that okay. what it's for? Right. Yeah, okay. Cool. okay. Fine. Right. Yeah. Sure, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Is that, I, I is that, thought is that not really easy I thought, answer. I thought it was just like a, a people saving pipe. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, your, your, your rationale makes more sense. Yeah. Where did it say that he was going again? Uh, to the piping room, maybe. I really don't remember. No, it was something other than that. It was like the... I don't know, it, it was just another room. There, there, there was definitely a threat of death like, implicit in where all of them were being sent. Yeah, like, the yeah. boiler room? Maybe the boiler, yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound like... Why is it... Doesn't why, sound why, like why, why is he boiling his chocolate? Yeah. Who knows, yeah. Maybe that's a secret. Because also, chocolate looks very watery. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, it looked... It didn't look appealing. It looked yeah. gross. No, it that was like just brown water. really been watered down. Yeah. 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 Apparently, they did it with uh, a mix of, like, water and cream. And apparently, like, by the end of the shoot, it had gone so rancid that it was, like, unbelievably smelly in that, in the, on that set. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so the, that scene where he had to drink it and eventually fall into it, were they at the start of the shoot or was that actually... I would hope at the is start. Is there a reason but... that that guy never did any acting again? It's possible that he was put off I for life. I had to jump yeah. into a pool of mould. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Uh, <laughs> and then we get Violet's death. Or, sorry, Violet's, uh, <laughs> Violet's whatever. You know, Violet's uh, undoing. Mm-hmm. When... Would she... Well, she's, she's sort of juiced, isn't she? Yeah, she seems yeah. the most likely to be okay at the end of it all, maybe? Yeah, I, if they get to her in time before she bursts, I, just, like, I don't know what I don't know what being I juiced. Mean, it, 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 it depends, like, cause I'd say that Veruca, she she's either going to be fine or she's going to be dead. It's one like, way. Yeah, it's, like, there's no <laughs> there's no middle ground with Veruca. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, whereas I, I feel like Violet, she's going to have some significant scarring, probably both physically and mentally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. She, she 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 eats some chewing gum. That's it. That's literally all she yeah. does. She's yeah. never going to eat chewing gum again, if yeah. anything, ever yeah. again. Mm. Which and is suddenly the... it it does this thing to her body where it changes the color of it, not just that, but then it makes her the shape inflates her, yeah, of, of a blueberry, yeah, <laughs> and it's just mad. 
<laughs> and so then she has to go and just get squeezed by just these weird These orange creatures. faced dwarves. Yes, what are they yeah. going to do to her? Like, to what, what's actually going to happen to her body? <laughs> what is actually going to happen? She's going to be juiced. All right, where's that juice coming from? Do don't it. answer. I don't want to know. <laughs> like, these are questions that have, like, plagued me. <laughs> you make a good point, actually. She may have the most traumatic road back yeah. to health. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, because Veruca just sort of needs a bit of a wash up because yeah, down the trash. Yeah, like so she's either been burnt to a crisp or she's fine essentially. Yeah, yeah so. yes, that's another incredibly dark. It's the sort yeah. of reference to her essentially being <laughs> burnt alive. Burnt yeah. alive. Oh yes, I, I, I overlooked that. Mm. Maybe Veruca's not fine. No. <laughs> um, if you had to pick, Mike TV will he 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 will never have to work again. Like he is going to be loaded. Yeah, yeah. being just that. That, that's small basically he'll be a circus attraction like hey I'm the world's smallest man woo look at me oh they're not gonna st- I thought they were gonna stretch him out oh they didn't Johnny Depp one sure but they, they referenced that that was the they? plan so, uh, so. okay sure if you had to pick one of the well obviously you'd pick Charlie's because he ends up getting a factory if you had to pick one of the other children's fates mm. as your own one of these four things is going to happen to you which one do you pick okay, I think well, Augustus yeah, maybe I, gets the I, I you think, know, I, I on, think in the Augustus circumstances, has a shower and then he's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Augustus, but also you know, you don't know how any of their stories end. Sure, yeah. Like Augustus, he goes to you know maybe the boiler room or whatever it is. I don't know, mm-hmm. but uh, you know that could be quite something. Could so be he finds re- himself in a boiler. Yeah. He'll be burnt for the rest of his yeah, life. Yeah, that's so. horrendous. The, mm. the idea of a boiler room is probably the worst. Well, boiler boiler room incinerator being juiced. <laughs> Being going on a rack, yeah, being stretched. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe being stretched is probably the one that might not kill you. Yeah, true. I Although, mean, it, it, it wouldn't be suggested if it if it wasn't going to kill him. True, because like, that is the horror of it. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like, there's, there's the, again, there's not really a middle ground between being stretched, so you become just like this weird flat thing. Yeah, and being stretched, how it actually work, where your limbs fall off. I yeah. don't think that's going to be a suggestion as a solution. <laughs> is it? No, you're true. Oh, that's you're really true. small. Better rip you apart. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about a thing, Mom. I feel fine. I'm famous. I'm a TV star. Wait till the kids back home hear about this. Nobody's going to hear about this. Where are you taking me? I don't want to go in there. Be quiet. Well... Well, fortunately, small boys are extremely springy and elastic, so I think we'll put him in my special taffy pulling machine. That should do the trick. Taffy? To the taffy pulling room. You'll find the boy in his mother's purse, but be extremely careful. Taffy pull. What's he saying? No, no, I won't hold you responsible. Any more thoughts? I think I'm done on terms of the actual. Yeah, in terms of the plots. All right, drinking games then. Okay. So the first one I sort of noticed is that the Oompa Loompas look like they're having a, a terrible time at all times. <laughs> yes. Like they are incredibly straight face. Well mm. it's it's one level above well you know indentured servitude. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was gonna say I could uh, yeah I, I can understand it, why they're so unhappy. Absolutely. Yeah like, like like at this point they're slaves. Yeah. And that's one level above where they were before. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> so, so yeah they're not happy. I would go for drink anytime an umpa lumpa looks deeply unhappy. <laughs> and I think it'll be smashed pretty swiftly yeah. once we're into the factory. You should put that on a t shirt. Drink yeah. whenever an umpa lumpa looks unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite, so I'm going to get to uh, a, a, a section of the, this podcast that I've newly introduced that I'm trying to bring in as much as possible, which is uh, John's IMDb corner. Uh, right. Just I always try to look at it. I've only done it like one. twice before. <laughs> I like to look at the IMDb trivia for a film before we do them, and sometimes mm-hmm. some of the like, facts are hilarious. This one, my favourite one, was that the Umpa Lumpers, the actors who played them, were cast from the local community, shall we say. You know, that's so just, were they German? Most of them, they, not all of them were German, but they were all from that part of the world. I mean, they, they were finding you know, little people who were just available in that German town at that moment. So it wasn't exactly a pact, you know? <laughs> They didn't have many to choose. No, from. so essentially what that meant was that a lot, the vast majority of them did not speak English. Yes, well, the audition process would be, <laughs> yeah, are you it? short? <laughs> yeah. Are you available? Do you object Great. to being painted yeah. orange? Yeah, like it's, <laughs> imagine being turned down. Yeah. You know, like, but no, apparently, so the trivia on IMDb reads, um, because none of them speak, a lot of them didn't speak English. This is why when you watch the film, many of them don't appear to understand the lyrics that they're singing. Well, no one. Or they don't know the words to the song because they're just, the song's already obviously pre-recorded by some kind of choir Mm. and they're just kind of umpa-lumpering about and just trying to look like they're singing it. (laughs) Is that a verb? I'm I'm making it umpa-lumpa, yeah. (laughs) Good. 
Uh, so that was top of my list. Yeah. Uh, so next one I've got, drink whenever he gets his whistle out. <laughs> Good euphemism there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he does like a whistle, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he uses it to lure them to him, doesn't he? Yeah. What about lure? Just sort of Just to get the world. There's definitely yeah. a Pied Piper element. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going for. Mm. Yes, I didn't mean anything yeah. seedy. Well, <laughs> well, heaven forbid. There's, the, well, there's, a, there's a future plot yeah. point. Well, <laughs> I mean, my next one, my first one actually ties well into that one, which is a drink for oddly sexual imagery. <laughs> which of which there was more than I remembered in this film watching it back, and I don't mean that I'm, I'm where where your judgment now. I don't mean stuff that I found sexy. I mean stuff that seemed strangely <laughs> unnecessarily. Like, did you get turned right. on by chicken decapitation? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Just stuff that seemed I don't know. Like for example, the gobstopper. Yeah, seemed pretty phallic. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It's just a pink thing, just going up and up and in and out and up yep. and out. Yeah, it reminded uh, me of. Um, the thing that Mac makes and it's always sending exactly the bike. Yeah. Have you ever watched that? No. Oh well. There's a I can't yeah, it's, it's it, too but... long to explain. Yeah, a repressed gay character invents a bike that uh, basically is also. Uh, he has a dildo at the seat area that just Fine. goes up and down. All you need to say. It's, yeah. It, it it it's to encourage him to cycle more because it's like he's getting like told not to sit down. Right. That's the excuse he uses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great show, very family friendly. Yeah, um, sounds yeah. But there's also uh, the little train ride they go on, where the thick white liquid just gets spl- <laughs> splurged all over them, which felt very unsettling. Sure, um, yeah, yeah. And also maybe a little bit less so, but the the lickable wallpaper struck me as a little bit yeah seedy and un- mm. un- unseemly. I don't know. Yeah, a bit gross. I, I was mainly thinking of hygiene. Hygiene, dreadful. Yeah. You know. But it's literally like, lick my cherries. Like, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it tastes of strawberries. Like, oh, this banana is delicious. Like, <laughs> I had also forgotten about the scene with the um, white liquid. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. until rewatching, and it is. Um, do you know when I was a child? And don't worry, this sentence isn't going to end horribly. I was quite scarred by people being gunged. Yes. I, I like Noel Evans' house party. Oh, like, yeah, get your own back and that Get your own. Thing. I used to hide behind the sofa during really? Get Your Own Back because I, I, there was something about the, I think, the sort of humiliation of being gunged. And there sure. are strong Get Your Own Back vibes oh, yeah. to them being sort of covered in that. Yeah. Very distressing and harrowing <laughs> really for me. It is. Um, I've also noted down any time. Willie's mood changes mm. pretty wildly without any real justification. <laughs> because yeah. I would also say the moment when he gets really angry at the end. Yeah. I mean, he's witnessed shitloads of kids break the rules all the way through. Mm. And then the only time he really sort of gets angry is with Charlie. That's because Charlie didn't die like he was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> it's ruined the plan. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think he, he is. A, so wild and eccentric that you, you there's a fair amount of drinking to be done any time oh. he absolutely is unhinged. Yeah, I'd definitely go with that. Very yeah. sinister character. And my last one mm-hmm. is, and you you have to have watched it a number of times, and also this would do for your IMDb corner. Sure. Um, anytime Charlie's voice changes because. Oh. He was he was apparently going through puberty, <laughs> and if he, I after reading this went back and compared his voice at the start, singing voice in particular, yes. is much higher initially mm. than it is towards the end. Yeah. So there's definitely a couple of drinks to be had throughout yeah. for that reason. Oh yeah, he used from like Sarah Brightman to Barry White by the yeah. way. <laughs> uh, I have a drink every time the Umpa Lumpers shame a child. <laughs> I mean, Augustus, so is, Augustus is really, it's, it's not just by the Umpa but sort of in fat shame to such an extent. Oh, indeed, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, you'd you, you neck a whole bottle just doing just, it just Augustus, the abuse. Yeah. yeah, it's a good thing he got out early, really, before yeah. the psychological score had kicked yeah. in too Toast much, so. Augustus when you're, you're drinking. <laughs> Definitely, you. yeah. Raise a glass to Augustus, <laughs> and be wherever he wants to be. But, um, yeah, but <laughs> I think the best one is Veruca's like demise though when it's like well blame the parents it's yeah. always the parents yeah. <laughs> but yeah she's the one who gets burnt to a crisp apparently so <laughs> she, yeah. too late for her apparently mm. but, yeah. Yeah. but I loved how big, like catty the, the Umpa Lumpa songs were <laughs> it, and also in your lowest moment of being humiliated by falling in a chocolate river yeah. to then have 
a group of people come along and sing a song about you in your worst moment yeah, yeah. It must be pretty it's sort of that's an ultimate kick in the nuts isn't it to, oh absolutely to be to have it I mean the emphasized. only one that the Oompa Loompas actually sing around while the kids are still there and they're not already dead is Violet uh, is Violet yeah, yeah. For her, they're doing a whole choreographed dance routine where they're rolling her around a room. Peak <laughs> humiliation, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You're fat, aren't you? Let's yeah. roll you around. That is probably <laughs> more. Be fun. That is probably hey, more uh, more harrowing than turning into a blueberry. Like it, it, that, that's worse, isn't it? I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd rather go through that than. Yeah, she can't escape the humiliation. Yeah. She's just lying there with, with yeah. a creepy little hand. She's just yeah. <laughs> lie there and take it. Yeah, yeah that's horrible. Yeah. Uh, again, another little behind the scenes thing apparently the actress for that scene did have to just be like obviously in a suit that was you know <laughs> just, just lie there yeah. for hours on end while they like redid this scene and the Oompa Loompas like sat and like lip synced obviously but yeah, like you know that must have made that's it very pretty, sick yeah, and rolled her back and forward yeah. Yeah. She, she said yeah it, it, it tormented her <laughs> she's probably the character that experiences no she's probably the she's probably the actor that experiences the closest thing to their character's fate like that is true she, yeah had to be in a costume like that and just rolled around for hours, yeah. <laughs> rolled around and take it yeah. for hours of filming. Whereas the others just jump down I a mean, hatch, jump into a river. Yeah, exactly. Like Veruca didn't actually get in cinema. Well, we hope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Her Wikipedia says she's still Ma- alive. Yeah. So Mike might see like... the ear stand in front of a green screen. <laughs> yeah, a very high quality green screen. Yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. I'd say Violet's fate is the closest to her character. Definitely. Augustus yeah. did have to be fat shamed in a small pipe. That is true, yeah. Because he's literally quite an overweight child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. Oh, okay, okay, maybe those two. Those yeah, at least, two, at least Violet fun. could get out of her costume. You know? yeah. <laughs> Poor Augustus, Poor or Augustus, whatever his yeah. name is yeah. in mm-hmm. real life. Well, we've covered this already, so uh, drink for any character who makes you a little uneasy about them being around children. Okay. <laughs> Who's yes. top of your list for that? Oh, the Candyman. The man. Candyman. Yeah, okay. yeah. That that candy man. He oh, is a God, yeah. whole room full of red flags, yeah. yeah. How does he still have a business? It doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah. to me. That's what I don't like about him. Also, there's How a does he still make yeah. money? There's a scene after and, him. And he sorry. gives he, sorry, I'm not done. He gives all those <laughs> he gives all those kids so much free chocolate and then Charlie comes in and the guy's like, Oh yeah, cough up then please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's Wait got his favourites, yeah. Wait for yeah. the one obviously sort of impoverished child to come in and then charge that one. Yeah. But give Everyone else free mm. treats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but after him, there's also a bit where Charlie's like selling. Though was very good. Sorry, I'm Sorry. Just, I, I yeah, yeah, spin, things. spin yourself out. Spin yourself out. Yeah. He's like, oh, you like that one, did you? You know, why do you try this one? Yeah. Oh, you know, I've got this really good bar right in the back. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just go and get it. Yeah. <laughs> but also, to give Come away so much want. for free is, I'd say, poor business management of what looks like quite a small business. Yes, mm. as well. Mm. That approach would substantially impact profits. Because also, all the kids run there immediately after school, which to me implies that's what they do every day. Yeah, yeah. you've got the audience in. Yeah, yeah. So is he doing that every single day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's he's yeah. I mean he he. I mean to be fair, for for all we know, he is just throwing away like skittles, like <laughs> like the real the cheapest of the cheap. Mm, it's yeah. nothing. Um, whereas, like, where he makes his real money is like, oh, there's a Wonka bar there. I'm not throwing yeah. that one away. I, I think his real money is made in human trafficking. <laughs> Get them through the door. <laughs> what is in that back? Shove room, them into yeah. the back of a van. And you're never seen again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, too dark. <laughs> no, I mean it's completely on point. But <laughs> very last one I've got then is once you finish the film, drink every time you catch one of the tunes in your head. Well, yes. Yeah. So just become like a chronic alcoholic at yeah. that point. <laughs> <laughs> Done and done. <laughs> yeah. Right, so at this point in the episode, right before we do sequels, I just want to let all our listeners know, and maybe our guests as well, um, the main drama on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash beyond the box set and subscribe to us for as much or as little as you think we're worth. <laughs> this is a bit where Harry kind of waves a little tin of change at you. Like, <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to... I don't have any cash for me, I feel like. <laughs> well, that's fine, because you can just go to Patreon. Of course I can, yeah. Beyond the box, yeah, you've got yeah. a phone right in front yeah, of you, I, I see it there. I'll go on it now. Go on, go, go to it. I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you waiting? Um, so, and yeah, if you do, you get a uh, you get a bonus show called Beyond Beyond the Box. Do I? Me and John go to the cinema pretty much every week mm. and uh, review all the films that we watch. Do you go on your cinema, tri- cinema trips together? Yes. No, oh, that's not. It's mostly like, fine. Yeah. It's like our weekly routine. We'll do an episode. We'll have some lunch, some dinner, I should say. And then we'll go to the cinema and watch a film. Then talk about it. So nice. It's a nice little routine we've got. Feel free to join us tonight if you want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so also, uh, if you become Patreon, you get a 30-second advert slot on the main show. You can advertise your own podcast or 
whatever you want to talk about. Also, once a month, we do a patron episode. We get a patron on the main show. They can choose the episode for us. Mm-hmm. Now, they can guest on it if they want to, but they don't have to. And, um, yeah, other than that, you get extended episodes, you get exclusive Facebook group, and I think that's everything. Yeah, I think so. Advert slot, you put that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair to say an advert slot. Yeah. Choose an episode, bonus episodes, extended episodes, Facebook group. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, all good. great. Thanks. So all that available, patreon.com slash beyond the box set. Okay, cool. now sequels. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Just rail those off really quickly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, do I, you want to go... I'd like speed it up. No, that's cool. Uh, so... We normally do like a guest sandwich, if you will, so if you're okay to go in the middle. Um, do you want to go first or last, Harry? Um, I'm going to go first, because I don't really want to build my idea up. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it, get, get this shit out of the way. Oh, that puts pressure on me, though. Mm. It puts pressure on John. Okay, oh, God. yeah, you're last, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so mine's more of a trail of thought. Okay, um, that's not... not r- 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 rather than like an actual novel. Sure, okay. Um, well, well, I didn't ask you to bring a novel. If it was 300 pages, I, we'd have I, a problem. I have written a novel. Oh, so. no. That's, well, okay, this is, this is going to be a seven-hour episode, guys. <laughs> so, you know, if you have any ideas around around this that can actually sort of bring it into a more of a story kind of situation, then yeah, great. But, sure. um, you know, if not, then just... I mean, I hope it's at least resembling a story. <laughs> well, we'll see. It's more, it's more sort of setting up a world. Okay. So this one is called Charlie and the Money Factory. Charlie and the Money Factory, okay, mm-hmm. sure. It's a sequel to the original. Um, so that's shortly afterwards and uh, I'm basically just going to talk about how the world changes in in the Um, wake of the original movie yeah okay sure Um, so the industry has been forever changed with the events that encompassed the whole world last summer when the Wonka factory replaced its CEO in an extravagant competition so Willy Wonka has stepped down and Charlie is now the boy ruler of the chocolate factory okay sure uh, Wonka Inc. had its biggest financial year in history and jumped to become a Fortune 500 company, nice. just from the sales of Wonka bars during its golden ticket campaign. I mean, it did seem to be the only news story. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, the CEO, Charlie Bucket, took the company to new highs when he converted the working factory into an exclusive theme park with controversially priced tickets. To maintain his compliance with health and safety, the actual chocolate factory has been relocated to Oompa Loompa Land to save costs. Okay, does that mean they've got to fight off, like, Vermidius Canids or whatever they're called, who are trying to, like... Well, basically, he's just shipped all the Oompa Loompas off back to where they came from. Oh, so the f- <laughs> they're just <laughs> but, still, but still demanded <laughs> that they make chocolate for him. Sure, okay. Right. Uh, Charlie, because, well, I mean, he's, he's not growing the cocoa beans in, you know, Germany or wherever the sure, factory sure, is, Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so Charlie and the rest of the Bucket family have all become super rich sure. um, and greedy off their newfound success. Uh, the rest of the industry has also changed somewhat, particularly when it comes to recruitment. Now, whenever a big company, like you know, such as Coca-Cola or Apple... Do they exist in this world? Maybe, I don't know. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, whenever they start to need more cash, for whatever reason, they just replace a CEO. With, with a young child. With, with a young child. But the point is, they do a very exclusive marketing campaign. Oh, I see. They, they have like, tickets. Sure. Hey, there's going to be five golden tickets. Process, what, or, yeah. in, in, five in, golden ring pulls on Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah <laughs> or five golden iPhones or, you know, sure. something. Yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, it, it, it works a bit shift stock. It's sustainable. It keeps the, it keeps the industry going and actually makes their businesses even bigger. Sure. Unfortunately for smaller businesses. <laughs> this has um, really gone into, like, econo- trickle-down economics. <laughs> <laughs> Um, smaller businesses are not as good at this. They've, you know, tried to take it a bit too hard. So when people try and apply for any job in a small business, the potential employee needs to first heavily invest in stock to try and find a lucky ticket. Right. You know, it might just be in a tomato or just like wrapped in a t-shirt. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> you know, more, more, more. that would ruin your tomato to try and sort of <laughs> squash a ticket into it. Yeah, but you wouldn't care because you get a job at the end of that's it. That's true. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe. I mean, you're down to the final five. Then. I mean, you yeah. may also you get go, a, a job go, opportunity. How many tomatoes have you eaten in your the course of your current <laughs> job seeking? Uh, well, not enough, clearly. Not I'm en- still not, not not employed. Not fully yeah. employed. Mm. Yeah. So this has actually increased the class wealth divide okay. quite significantly. The levels of poor and homeless people have soared very high, and the rich people are just much, much richer. They're now jumping between jobs as status symbols instead of ways of life. Thank Whereas God this is just a fantasy and not a, <laughs> just you know, an everyday right. occurrence. And... Whereas the poor people, they can't get new jobs because they can't afford to buy stock sure. to actually do, oh. buy, buy, buy items to actually get the golden tickets. Okay, yeah. As time goes... I mean, it's pretty far-fetched, but I'll follow you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a roll doll story. Sure. Why not? <laughs> As time goes by and the rich get richer, 
companies start to merge and get bought up by larger companies, such as Wonka Inc. Oh, so it's like a Wonka monopoly. And <laughs> a Wonka monopoly. A Wonka monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> a Wonka monopoly. And Charlie trying to quench his thirst for wealth. Mm-hmm. As, Is he know, fully like? been corrupted by wealth and power. Oh, I mean, he fully took that last line of dialogue to, to heart, you know. Yeah. What, the boy who got everything lived happily ever after, yeah. So now he just wants everything. Yeah, basically, the boy who had everything, or the child who got everything, is Veruca Salt, and that didn't think, things didn't end up so well for her, so yeah, yeah terrible advice at the end. Yeah. Oh, ridiculously bad advice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he buys up all his competition, creating a one canopoly mm-hmm. on the confectionery market. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. He starts to market his chocolates for poor people in their millions. Chocolates for poor people. Um, claiming that his chocolates, while, <laughs> while more expensive than the competition, which he also owns, sure. were worth every poor boy's family's lost pennies. Right, okay. Trying to take off his own experience there. Like, hey, once I was oh, born, so I spent my last penny on chocolate. He's manipulating his own backstory. That's what he's saying. That's all I've got here. Okay, that's, I think that's good. It's like the corrupting, the corrupting influence of money on Charlie. Like... Is there going to be a comeuppance, or is there going to be a redemption, do you think? Oh, comeuppance, definitely. You want a comeuppance? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, okay, the, the, what's this... Charlie's comeuppance? Like, revolution? I don't know, maybe, maybe he does... Like social get, revolution? Maybe, or... maybe he does just get everything. Yeah. And he just grows old. And he becomes like an Elon Musk figure. And, like... and, he, and he, <laughs> he, he, he realises that he has everything, but... Yeah. All his family have died now, and now he just has nothing. He, but he has everything. Sure, yeah, yeah. He owns every business, and is he happy with that? And he has all. Of course, he's not happy right. with that, mm. right? Because he's got everything, and he. But he still wants more, right? Yeah. Okay. But so what does corrupted then? Well, not corrupted. He's just sort of been tainted forever by his. Yeah. What's his like rosebud going to be then? Like oh, if he's the. God. I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Like you know, what's his thing? If he's got everything, what there's got to be something he thinks is going to bring him happiness. Like, is there something he's going to be reaching for? Like, space travel or world domination or love, you know? Who needs space travel when you've got the Wonka face? Well, exactly, yeah. I mean, that could do it. He's yeah. inherited the Wonka face. He so has, he's fine. true. Actually, yeah, in the Great Gas Elevator, they do go to space, don't they? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean... It's not a good book. The more we ignore that, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. whole thing. Yeah. I just, I, like, I... Uh, that is a sequel, obviously, in itself, which I'm just choosing to present has has never. Existed. I think we're all going to agree not to, yes. yeah, not, not to yeah. dwell too much on that. But I feel like if he's wealthy and he's he's getting his comeuppance, he needs there needs to be something that's out of his grasp. I'd, whether I'd, it would just be happiness, or yeah, just like love or happiness or something like sure, that. Like okay. I'd like to like it to be that he gets everything. Mm. And he just proves Willy Wonka wrong that what happened to the boy who got everything mm. while he actually lived unhappily ever after. Well, no. maybe there's a vicious cycle where he literally become he at some point decides he needs a... Because I presume he doesn't have his own children. Mm. Maybe he decides he needs... <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> he has his own, you know, competition to yeah. bring five children into the factory and... That factory is no place to raise children. It I is not. We've, no, we've no. learned yeah. that. Yes. Well, <laughs> Certainly well, not. Well, it's like a competition that he runs to, you know, find the next CEO of one. Exactly. Group. Yeah. He, he just. Did. But because like that idea is completely burnt out. Like, there's five golden tickets out there. There's only actually four applicants. Four people buy one yeah. class or something. Yeah. And like. Yeah, the applicants just... aren't great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yes, I think there should definitely be a full circle kind of quality to this one right kind of whether or not the other kid is just another charlie or whether it's someone a bit different i don't know but but yeah that could totally work yeah well i think it would probably be the opposite of charlie i think whoever this other kid is so this kid's what really avaricious and greedy and selfish and yeah maybe hmm. i mean we just see like a quick little montage of how that goes sure i don't know maybe maybe one division just fails and then the world goes back to normal <laughs> sure <laughs> Well, if one company has a monopoly, I mean, you know... He's got no one to compete with. Yeah, there's no Slugworth anymore, yeah. Yeah, what exactly. A, what an industry digression that is to go from producing chocolate to Wonka Vision. Yeah. That is quite the... <laughs> that is a good point, yeah. ...gear change, isn't it? Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've made a career out of creating chocolate and confectionery. <laughs> but now, now the media. <laughs> now I'm going to be a media mogul. Yeah. I can't think of any well, examples. I mean, to, to be fair, actually, the, the reason that he was going into it was that he was looking into cutting down his delivery costs. Yes, yes that's true. Delivery time time time. Time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He's like, okay, well, I want to put chocolate in everybody's house. Yeah. This is how I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. It's just a quite an extravagant solution mm. to a still chocolate-based problem. <laughs> Who knows whether... Well, yeah. Whether it worked or not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another sequel in itself. Yeah. It is, yeah. I mean, also, he has discovered shrinking technology, which is incredible. In- yeah. Especially the, the, shrinking the, a human. Yeah, yeah. the possibilities of shrinking things, including life, of course. Yes. That's... Outstandingly amazing. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, I feel like we we're more than button. just like he's wasted in confectionery. <laughs> yeah, he really. Is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so I guess that's kind of a bleak look at the corrupting influence of power and money. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So okay. yeah, Charlie sure. and the money factory. Sure, very good. Okay, I feel like we could tighten up the ending there, but ultimately, we've yeah, got I, I didn't really have an ending there for it. I really didn't know how to end it. But yeah, maybe that's the po- maybe that's I, the lesson. It doesn't have a neat little ending. It's just a bit bleak. Yeah, yeah I think I, I would I would like it to ultimately be a bit bleak for Charlie, and then maybe it just. If you want it to come full circle, a new person comes in who's really greedy and stuff, and he's runs the company into the ground, sure. and other companies thrive off that, mm-hmm. and the world just vaguely goes back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it and ends we, up, and, with, we, and we still don't know when it's set. Maybe it ends up with Augustus Gloop taking over. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he steps in. I feel like he deserves some. He does. Uh, that's yeah. I think he deserves a break. Yeah. Like he just eats a lot. Like that's not the worst thing. No. That's that's not that's not a terrible quality. Apart from Veruca, non- well, actually, no. Mike TV is pretty obnoxious and. Yeah, I know Augustus what's, is definitely. What's wrong with What's wrong with Violet? Yeah, she she's a little bit yeah, she chews breaks, too much gum. Breaks her rule and eats gum. Yeah, mm. she's she's a bit yeah, it's like she's got bad manners. She she's doesn't... not yeah, she's not that bad, is no, she? Basically Veruca is the great evil of the four of them. You know, yeah. the rest of them aren't particularly evil people. I mean yeah, Violet Vi- yeah, Violet and Augustus they just did yeah. the same thing that Charlie did, but they got caught. They were unfortunate. They, they, yeah. they didn't have the opportunity to go and apologise. Yeah, yeah. They just didn't fart. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they just couldn't fart the way out of their problems. Yeah. Oh, if only they could. Yeah. If only they could. Oh okay. god, like Violet farting and that being her solution. I mean, I think that's what that's, we didn't see. Yeah. That's what the juicing was. Yeah. Oh, god. Okay, let's draw a veil over that one and uh, move on to Pete's idea. <laughs> okay, so the film ends with them being in the Wonka Vator, doesn't it? And sort yeah. of flying off into sp- yes. well, the to somewhere yeah, yeah. so I want to pick up straight off the back of that and I want them well the Wonka Vader returning to Earth essentially and I see it as some sort of crash landing a bit like Sandra Bullock in Gravity oh great <laughs> so they land they uh, take in their surroundings and mm. this is the point at which I want Willy Wonka to go off into the distance in a sure. cliche film sunset like yeah. I, I want his sort of outcome to be quite ambiguous so he just steps out and leaves Charlie and Grandpa Joe well, the, the, the first film is all his retirement plan sure 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 yeah. he fucks off like right. that, that he, he's done he's right. done but then I'm taking quite a sort of realistic approach to Charlie running a factory mm-hmm. I see financial problems <laughs> for the factory given it's now being run by a child who's only real skill is, is is sort of powerful burping. Yeah. Um, I mean, the moment those Oompa Loompas unionise, it's over. Like, yeah, well, this is the yeah. thing. I have also I have also unionised the Oompa Loompas. Great, good. Yeah. Because I think it's very clear that, that their working rights are, are poor. Yeah. So I see, um, probably seeing how sort of shambolic the general organisation of their, their employer is, mm. I, I do see the Oompa Loompas unionising. Yeah. Which obviously is quite a lot for a, for a child in Charlie to to take on for someone to explain what a workers' union is <laughs> on top of being given the keys to a, a factory. Now I, I'm also choosing to focus the sequel on Veruca Salt as a, a sort of vengeful Veruca Salt. Excellent. A, yeah. yeah. I, so I think she is someone who is used to getting everything they want mm-hmm. from quite a wealthy background. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of therefore um, funding behind her and also yeah her being quite vengeful I've decided to make Veruca a I've decided to make her a, a conservative MP so I think that is absolutely her, her <laughs> destiny in life yeah. and therefore the basis of the film amid Charlie struggling with running the factory I see the sequel as being Veruca Salt versus the unionised Oompa Loompas. <laughs> Great. Great. So that is... Is that a title? Uh, <laughs> that's a good yes. title. Yes, you can have that. I said, I said earlier that I hadn't come up with the title. Maybe I have. Maybe it is Veruca Salt. The lady is not for churning. Yeah. <laughs> churning and butter and chocolate. Very good. So I see that dispute as being the real sort of um, focus mm. of the sequel and the quite political heart yeah I, I'm a little bit unsure of the I would I would like the Oompa Loompas to come up out, out on top I have sure. not decided quite how they do that do the Oompa Loompas elect a leader like as a, as a Sally Field figure if you will a Norma Ray where she plays sure. a union leader like so, to represent them yeah like a court, if this film descends into like a court case between 
the head on Palumpa and Veruca Salt. Crucially played by an actor who can speak English, unlike most of the Umpa Loompa. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, who would you cast as an Umpa wow. spokesperson um, turned uni- union, you know, rabble rouser? I mean, that's. I, I mean, I, I can choose a. I can choose an actor of sort of any size, can't I? You could Gary Oldman. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and that's why I'm choosing to. I'm choosing to make this film quite gritty. It's, yeah. it's yeah. in in the bleak Berlin esque setting of mm. the first film. I'm really it's it's factories, mm-hmm. it's grainy settings. It's it's all quite grey and bleak. Yeah, I feel like this is like really good in for some Oscars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Gary Oldman's a good choice. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, what other potential? Um, Tilda Swinton. I'm seeing a real sort of. I'm seeing sort of a Timothy Spall man of the people type. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm seeing that perhaps. Good, actually, yeah. 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 There you go, I've cast Timothy Spall. Timothy Spall. Yes. <laughs> the role he was born to play yes, uh, as a. Uh, <laughs> Umpa Lumpa union leader. Trade yeah, union exactly. Leader. So that's what I've gone for there. Yeah. Um, I'm quite undecided on the fate of Willie himself. This mm. might be something that both of you can can help with I'm I'm quite happy with the story sort of ending with the first film is essentially as I said his retirement plan sure he's just on a beach somewhere yeah he's, he's made some money he's fine I'd like to see him still with Umpa Loompa's working for him yeah you know like as a footstool he took his and... favourites yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah nice okay maybe yeah maybe he's gone back to Umpa Loompa land yeah and as Harry's mentioned, he is basically living there as a despot, and the Umpa Lumpas are his servants. But then, unbeknownst to him, back home, back at the, in the chocolate factory, the Umpa Lumpas have unionised and become, yes. you know, liberated. Yes. And then, at the end of the film, maybe after they've taken over the chocolate factory and they are now running it as, like, a, a socialist co- yeah. cooperative, yeah. Um, they send word back to Umpa Lumpa Land, and you see, like, his... <laughs> <laughs> you know his his main like man his main servant getting like a message through and then it's like revolution starts to spread nice and next thing you know he's just like tied to a pole and being burnt at the stake or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah I do like the um, I mean it's a potential title in itself the liberation of the Oompa Loompas yes is, mm-hmm. is the heart of my mm-hmm. sequel mm-hmm. and the only other thing that I noted down was that I I am. I am writing off Grandpa Joe straight away. Sure, he dead. He, he's he's dead. <laughs> yeah, and I I, I, I think things. even Charlie is probably sort of so focused on the the so consumed by the stress of running the factory that even he doesn't sort of he doesn't sort of remember fondly his no. his time with Grandpa Joe. No. Grandpa Joe's gone. Yeah, it it's done. I also see Veruca as exactly the sort of person who would hold quite a strong grudge against the Oompa Loompas because they were they witnessed her at her worst. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> they have absolutely fueled her, mm-hmm. her her vengeance. Yes. That whole experience is is very sort has has really poisoned her, essentially. Yeah. So that is the basis of my, my sequel is Oompa Loompas and a vengeful Veruca Salt. I like it. Okay. Mm. I think that could be like directed by like a really gritty British director like Mike Lee or something. Yeah. Right? Okay, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, very good. Thank you. So, Thank you. Okay, so my sequel, thankfully, has gone in a very different direction. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we've all taken different directions, which is always good. Yeah. I was really struck by what we discussed a lot very early in this episode about how the f- this film basically has the setup of a horror movie. Mm-hmm. It's got, like, ho- the first third is introductions to characters. The middle section is all those characters being killed off one by one <laughs> until there's a final girl or a final Charlie at this True, point, classic who horrible. Who survives and... Then the film ends because it doesn't really matter what happens with that person. Yep. Just, he's the last, he or she has survived. So with that in mind, I thought of a recent horror sequel, which was uh, It Chapter 2. And I yes. thought, what have you adapted that to Charlie and the Chocolate Cliff Factory? So my sequel idea is called Wonka Chapter 2. Nice. And uh, it picks up 30 years after the original. <laughs> so again, we don't really know what decade that leaves it in because the original is entirely, you know... Mm-hmm ambiguous in that place in that sense so but i'm thinking 30 years have passed and breaking news across the world because as we know willy wonka is the the dalai lama of this you know <laughs> yeah. of this world of this of this universe we're living in like it's the hugest story 30 years later the news breaks that a reclusive reclusive genius and chocolate entrepreneur willy wonka has in fact passed away oh, no. and then we flash around the world to all of these 40 year old adults who were you know ten year olds thirty years ago, who experienced the Willy Wonka factory, and they learn that he's dead, and suddenly they all get flashbacks to this incredibly traumatic moment in their lives, and then the film is going to be them reconnecting with each other. So we're going to start with showing 
how they all you know lived their lives and how they dealt with the trauma that they suffered in the chocolate factory. So I think obviously we start with Augustus Gloop, um, mm. and I think in the again in the grand tradition of it too. So uh, <laughs> he is now I think he's now a personal trainer. <laughs> he is shredded. Ripped, yeah, he is sure. ripped and shredded. <laughs> he is plagued by body dysmorphia. Yeah. In, in constant terror of gaining weight, like his. It's like, like he's haunted by images of like chocolate and you know, <laughs> he looks into mirrors and sees like his old fat self and stuff. He's just like, he's completely broken by this, you know, the, lev- the sheer level of fat shaming that was leveled at him as a child. So he sees this image that Willy Wonka's dead and he's relieved, but also he's very triggered by, you know, the memories of all that kind of stuff. Then the next one's going to be Violet Beauregard. And I feel like she has obviously become very traumatized by the Mm -hmm. chewing of the gum so she's never chewed any gum again i think she's also she's i think her sin if it's even a sin in the original movie is that she's quite outspoken she's quite loud mouthed Mm -hmm. so i think she's now incredibly i'm thinking she's basically a crazy cat lady she's incredibly shy she's incredibly maybe she's agoraphobic even that's quite a uh a humongous i mean she's gone from one scale to the other that's what i'm thinking they've all done this so obviously augustus has gone from yeah chubby kid to reversing them all yeah they're all they're all like so affected about what happened to them that it's given them this these incredible neuroses so yeah i think maybe even she's got no teeth anymore because she's never chewed gum (laughs) so her teeth have all fallen out because she can't look after them properly uh, and she's just this like toothless crone cat lady, you know, mm-hmm. basically. So then she's watching in her, you know, cat filled apartments and she sees that Willy Wonka's dead and she's, again, we see the hair take all that in and react to it. Uh, then we go to Veruca Salt, who I would imagine having survived her trauma, she is now a humanitarian. <laughs> she's, wow. What she's really, had, she's, had, she's had a positive turn, you know, because she, she's, she's let go of all of her selfishness and she's become like a, maybe she's even become like a socialist revolutionary. Like okay. she's incredibly anti-wealth. She's, because she is so scarred by the, this, you know, materialistic girl that she once was mm-hmm. that now she's the complete opposite of that. Maybe she's working, maybe she's working as a journalist for like, you know, and a kind of a political, social firebrand. Right. Yeah. And so, so she's maybe doing quite well. She's like our Jessica Chastain of you. You could even cast her, you know. <laughs> but then she she's knocked for seven by the memories of you know what what she went through, and then Mike TV. I'm just wondering, is he about to become like a radio presenter or something? I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. what's, what's the opposite of TV? Does he hate TV now? I don't is think that... radio is the opposite of TV, Harry. That's quite rude. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the anti TV. I was thinking he could be like living in nature, like he's a um, what are they called like a survivalist. Oh okay. ah, yeah, yeah. He's living off the grid. Uh, okay, but he's sure. still got like a grainy little black and white TV. So he, even he, because obviously it's the yeah. it's the kind of news that no one can escape from. You know, it's mm-hmm. like when the Queen dies. So he also gets the somehow gets the message that Willy Wonka has died. And so though I feel like from there we get to the four children who are now adults. Obviously, I mean, any any thoughts on who could play? Like who, who's going to play like forty year old uh, Ruka Salt? She's probably the easiest one. Um, Ruka Salt. So we see really loud. Um, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, well, she was a redhead, wasn't she? And I already said Jessica Chastain. So Bryce, tell us how it could work. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Any, any, any advance on that? I mean, well, well I, I guess just because the actor is not English doesn't mean they can't play the no, role. No, not at all. A, I'm just trying to picture someone just playing that sort of like socially. Well, you said sort of a a campaigner essentially. Yes, yes. Who am I seeing as a campaigner? They've got to be around forty. I mean, you can mix it up a bit, but around yeah. forty. Be a socialist campaigner. I mean. I was going to say a sort of Olivia Colman feels like an ob- obvious choice, mm-hmm. but I was about to pitch Olivia Colman for Violet. Were you? Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to think of someone that you that, that an audience, a viewer, would automatically sympathise with. Yeah, and that's I, what I you're trying you... to go for with Veruca, isn't it? Definitely. So I'm trying to think of very popular, almost unanimously oh, okay. popular yeah, actors. I think you've done better with Olivia Colman because she can play kind of whiny and annoying. Yeah. Better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe she's sort of yeah she's sort of got a few of her Sophie and Peep show qualities too. Like okay, well. yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. What about Augustus then? So post, you know, now he's properly shredded. He's probably got a bit of an eating disorder. You know, I mean, you reference it too. I mean, the casting of that character in it too. Yeah, <laughs> well, was li- was so that, lu- was that so that original ludicrous, yeah. child actor to that is yeah. bizarre. It really was. So <laughs> are you are you following those lines of going from Augustus to? Yeah, that, it was. I fully just stole that whole idea. Right. Yeah, um, uh, Hemsworth. Hemsworth. One of the Hemsworths. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was thinking of that or Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. Well, they're, they're both actors. Well, no, 
Chris Hemsworth never actually never actually been overweight, but Chris Pratt has been fat, and then he got like really ripped. So yeah, yeah, he could work. Yeah, because I guess he could play that whole kind of like someone who has been fat before could be fat again. Yeah. It's like hanging over him. Whereas like yeah. I was thinking of him more as like someone who was like ridiculously wiry, like right. he's so far removed from what Augustus once was. But right. no, that could work too. Yeah, I think if you're going for that sort of narrative trajectory for mm-hmm. them, you have to go as far to cliche Hollywood a lister. Good looking, yeah, ripped, yeah. yeah. Well, Thor essentially. Well, exactly, yeah. So Chris, yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's peak from Augustus Gloop to Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll pretend Fat Thor never happened in, the, in this scenario. Yeah, like, nice. okay. he was offered that. Was like that's too triggering. I can't do that. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess the point is that there was Mike TV, Mike TV, yeah, crazy naturist, survivalist. Like it's got to be someone a bit wacky, a bit Nick Cage is too old, but a bit you know mm. someone who can play a bit wacky. Jake Gyllenhaal maybe. Oh, yeah. J.J. Hall's Hall yeah. is Mike, adult Mike okay. TV. It makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. And Are you having his adult Charlie? Well, I'm guessing to Charlie. I mean, I've not really thought this through, but the, the idea is that the four of those kids, then somehow they communicate with each other and they all meet up, much like the kids in it, in it too do. You know, they get together yeah. and then they're like, you know, for the first time since that experience, they all reunite and they, you know, some of them have better memories of it than others. Some of them yeah. are in denial. But they all, deci- they all realise that they need to confront this trauma that happened in their lives and also the, I guess the pretext of it is that Charlie and his family were never seen again mm-hmm. after that day the doors closed you know after they launched into the, the great glass elevator or whatever he was just never seen again nor was Uncle Grand- I keep wanting to say Uncle Joe never was Grandpa Joe nor were any of his family members they, they all just disappeared that day so maybe the other four kids who are now adults obviously go on a quest back to the Wonka factory to try and find out whatever happened to Charlie and maybe that is the plot of this sequel, essentially, whatever happened to Charlie. Okay. Now I don't know whatever happened to Charlie because that's where my inspiration ended. But I'm, what do you, what do you guys think? Like, yeah. So you're thinking that he stays in the factory? Yeah, I think the mystery of this film is going to be whatever happened to Charlie. Oh, and maybe so wait, they, like nobody ever saw Charlie after. That. Nobody saw Charlie again. The the, the Wonka right. factory continued to. Mm. What about the, the, what about a bit of a narrative full circle in that he becomes this reclusive. Enigmatic. Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like he Willy becomes Wonka. his own you don't Wonka see figure. Him yeah. Much. Yeah. yeah, he's hidden away. Have you watched Rick and Morty? No. Okay. Well, you've not seen anything. Um, <laughs> Rude, Harry. <laughs> You're like me. Um, okay. Well, John, do you remember the episode where for Beth's childhood, Rick created this world where she could go and nothing would ever hurt her? Oh yeah. But, like, her friend goes in that world and gets lost forever. Oh, are you thinking that's Charlie? Yeah. Okay, that's good. And he's just gone completely insane. Yeah. Okay, so I, he's been... I can understand why a character in Charlie's situation would end up completely insane. Yeah. I mean, mm. what a fucking weird life. Just live in that world. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he's been living, like, as an Oompa Loompa. Yeah. Even though he's yeah. not an Oompa Loompa. He, yeah, he's, he's fully... He gone. sings everything in a, in what a, if in a tune. Yeah, if he's just sort of blended into the background as one of the Impa Lumpers. Yes. Oh, like literally. What? Yeah. Right, okay. so, yeah so maybe the, maybe the other four, and again, I'm, I'm completely ripping off it too for this whole thing, <laughs> but maybe they like break into the chocolate factory. Willy Wonka's obviously passed away. And it's bit, maybe it's now being run by Impa Lumpers or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they just keep... Overthrown delving. by... They, yeah, they, yeah, it's now become like, yeah, they've overthrown the whole place. But maybe it's the four... <laughs> They're wearing his bones. Yeah, maybe, yeah exactly. <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe they've gone completely feral. Yeah, yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe they killed him maybe they did maybe they did, did kill him it, they, they, that's it the Oompa Loompas have gone feral no, no, I, I, I like the idea well sure that still works but I like the idea that Charlie is one of the Oompa Loompas no I know I, that's what I think Charlie is part of that he's yeah. long since like been lost in mm-hmm. Oompa Loompa land but as, you can revisit all the old sets as the kids go deeper and deeper and they're all confront, they all confront mm. their own fears so we, they go through the same parts of the factory that they went through the first time so mm-hmm. Augustus has to face the pipe again mm-hmm. and it's like you're not going to get stuck this time you've, you're, you're much thinner now it's fine you know Violet you don't have to eat that bubblegum <laughs> maybe he's so <laughs> ripped and hench that he does get stuck but for muscle bound reasons yeah. rather than being overweight exactly yeah his shoulder is his shoulders rather than his belly now. his shoulders yeah, exactly. are too wide yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but then maybe everybody's like if you just flex, you'll break this pipe. Flex, <laughs> yeah. flex, Augustus. Yeah. Flex. Yeah, they yeah. all. That's it. They all revisit it, but they all over. They all manage to get through it, and they manage to make make peace with their trauma. Yeah. So sure. yeah, you're right. So Augustus uses his new 
newfound henchness to just flex about the situation. I like that. That's good. Violet no longer needs to chew the chewing gum, so she's mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't need this anymore. Yeah. Veruca realizes she doesn't want a golden egg. She she, she can put that away, you know. Mm-hmm. And Mike TV just yeah, they all resist basically. Mike, yeah. Mike TV breaks the camera. He's like, I don't want to be on TV anymore. Yeah. Right. So they all confront their own worst fears and go deeper and deeper into the factory until they eventually find Charlie at the center, maybe mm-hmm. in the. What was in the, the office, office? in the office, end, in the yeah. office, just we're, we're, we're doing some admin. Completely we're, 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 everything's in like half. Yeah. in that office. Yeah, and they they make him realize that he's been the subject of you know Stockholm syndrome, mm-hmm. and they they lead him out into the sunlight, and I guess that's where it ends. Or maybe they all run it to get the factory to get no. They so run. they're all. They're, it's almost your your sequel is almost them like saving yeah. Charlie from the factory, which it, it's a redem- became his yeah. inevitable future. It's a redemption arc for all the characters, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I quite like that. Yeah. That's yeah. Strong ending. Thank you. I was really winging that as well. So <laughs> <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So that was uh, Wonka colon chapter two. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah very good. Great, okay. Yes. Uh, should we get to some listener submissions? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Yeah. We always ask our listeners to <clears throat> submit their own sequel ideas to the films that we do, so sure. they often come up with much better things than we do. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I've got a bunch here. I'm a lot, sure you did. A lot of them are not necessarily listen submissions. How um, many, what percentage of them are, there's already a sequel, it's called The Glass Elevator. Oh, I, I, I already moved past that in my Good. In, in, the, in the post that I made. Good. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. However, half of them are all just like, well, actually, uh, Snowpiercer is basically the sequel, and oh, this is why. Sake. Although, I like that idea. but no. I like that idea, too. But I've just had lots of people say, give me that idea. Sure. So, okay, Tim Saxby, which is, he's not given, given me an idea, he's just let us know. Um, they're actually working on a prequel to this film. Oh, God. Um, which he thinks is in-universe. Okay. Directed by Paul King, who I don't know, and possibly starring Ryan Gosling or Ezra Miller. That sounds insufferable. Yes, yeah, so If they were, I can... I can that, superb casting. Who did, did they, you say? Who did you say sent that? Ryan Gosling um, or Sachs. Ezra? I think Tim Ezra Sachs. Miller. If yeah. they were to Ezra do, Miller could work. Yeah. Ryan Gosling, it's a flat no for me. But yeah. Ezra Miller, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can. I can absolutely. Is that see like that a happening. Netflix thing? It feels like a Netflix thing. No idea, but yeah, maybe. Okay. Colin Spenroth says Wonka, a chocolate story. <laughs> How did he get the factory? Where did he get his hat? Where did his name come <laughs> from? All of this will be spelled out for you. I think they're going for uh, Solo with Star Wars. Yeah, story, I feel like know? that's. Yeah, I see that vibe. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Lee Michael Hollard says, uh, Willy Wonka and the class action lawsuit. <laughs> it's my favourite so far. Yeah. Uh, Robert L. Kelly says, ignore Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. It's not very good. Instead, focus on the transition of Charlie taking over day-to-day operations of the factory and of Wonka's stay way past the appropriate period for handing over the reins. <laughs> Have him hover over Charlie as he makes decisions, making passive-aggressive remarks and sighing in disappointment every now and then. Eventually, Charlie has to have one of the Oompa Loompas remove him. He winds up living outside the factory and telling everyone who goes by, I used to own that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. It's worth it. That's done. It's yes, very good ones. Yeah, that's the last one I've okay. got. Okay, I have a few too, oh, very quickly. We have Dennis Fanning said, Willy Wonka and the non-extradition country. <laughs> uh, Spencer Cobb said, Willy Wonka and the socialist uprising. I think we've already had that one, yeah. Travis Owen said, Willy Wonka and the CGI ghost of Gene Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Klemer said, Willy Wonka 2, Free Willy 5, Kill Bill Volume 3. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mike Carey said, Charlie Bucket and the mystery of why Wonka cream eggs are smaller now than they were when we were young. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Carey also said, the Mike TV presidency. Just haunting, <laughs> but... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and finally, Rob Trainer said, The Umpa Rebellion. Charlie doesn't run the factory with the Iron Fist that Willie did, and soon he has no employees and is running for his life. So. <laughs> I'm glad the Umpa, there's, there's some justice for the Umpa Lumpers. There seems there, to be a, a common thread that, yeah, there's yeah, justice for the Umpa Lumpers. They like yeah. the Umpa Lumpers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that seems good, yeah, okay. So, um, thank you everybody for those sequel ideas. We ask for your listener submissions every week, a few days before we record, by putting posts out on Facebook and Twitter where you can post your ideas. So make sure you like and follow our pages if you don't want to miss out. Mm -hmm. To listen to more episodes of Beyond the Box Set, you can subscribe and browse our back catalogue on any podcasting platform, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and many others, where all of which you can also leave us a five-star review if you so wish. It really helps us out. As mentioned, we're also available on Patreon, which is exclusively for the people who would raise us five stars or more if they could. You can find all of those links in the description below or at beyondtheboxset.com. And so thank you very much, Pete, for joining us. Thank you, thank you for having me. Would you like to do one last minute plug for your podcast or anything else you might want to plug? If you like pouring over films in obsessive detail, (laughs) then maybe you would also (laughs) like pouring over episodes of Friends in obsessive detail. I'm sure there's crossover there. Yeah, there absolutely is. 
I, I mean, there's potential for a, a exploring a sequel to Friends, I think, at some Absolutely, point. Absolutely. Yeah. A crossover. Uh, if you search Friends with Friends in your podcast apps, uh, wherever you get your podcasts from, uh, we will be in there. Um, there are loads of episodes and loads of great guests for you to dive into. Fantastic. And thank you very much for your time tonight. It's been a lot of thank fun. You and thank for you for, for bringing this iconic film. So, yes, next week, Harry, we actually have another guest. It's oh, a right, guest a overload. Yes. Oh, so goodness, we're going to be joined by one of our Patreon subscribers next week. Oh, fantastic. A lovely man named Finn who's coming mm-hmm. down from Scotland to visit us, I believe. Is he? He is, oh, yeah. That's an effort, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. People Good come from Finn. far and wide. Yeah. yeah. And he's going to be bringing a little film called Moonrise Kingdom. Oh, great. That'll be good. Cool. So thank you again, Pete. Thank you. Thank Thank you, you, Harry. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you, listeners. Join us next week for Moonrise Kingdom with Finn. Yeah, see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Say bye. Goodbye.